Uh, my name is Kylie and I teach physics and astronomy at Edgewood College and I wanted to talk today about how we can use our hands to actually study astronomy and objects that are really big. So what we need to do to study astronomy using our hands is talk about angular sizes and what that actually means. So way back before the age of modern technology we had to figure out ways of measuring distance, distant objects using the tools we had available and those tools included our eyes and our hands. And so to do this, what we did was we said everything is measured in angles. The reason why is because it helps avoid confusion. So if you look straight ahead, um, you can measure that as angle zero. If you look to one of your sides, you can measure that as angle 90, all the way back angle 180, and then you flip your head 270 and 360. And so by looking in a circle, you've completed 360 degrees. And so if I say, look 180, you'll turn your head to face the other way. And so this is what we did to avoid confusion, in case two people weren't facing the same direction, or in case you're in the middle of the ocean and you don't know where you're going. Um, if you measure everything in terms of a circle, there's no confusion to be had on which way is left and which way is right, because you've gotten rid of what's left and right. So we are going to use angles to talk about um, the sky and um, how we actually measure things in astronomy. To show you how you can measure something's angular size in astronomy, I want you to close one of your eyes and find a distant object. So I'm going to use my dog as the object because she's sleeping on the stairs. And take that object and sandwich it between your fingers and figure out how big that object is. But remember, close one of your eyes. So my dog looks like she's roughly the size of a pea from here. Um, we know that's not true because dogs are way bigger than a pea, and she is way bigger than a pea. But because she's far away from me, she looks like she's much smaller. And that idea is what we're going to use to actually figure out how far or how big something is on the sky. So although my dog looks like she's the size of the pea, if you include the distance from me to her, then she'll look like she's much bigger, then she will um, be much bigger. And so by looking at how big something looks to be and how far away it is, we can figure out roughly how big it is. Um, so this is not a new method of um, determining sizes. It's a very old method that they actually used to use when sailing. And when they sailed, they used these things called sextants. So if you look up in this corner right here, I have two pictures for you of um, different sextants that were used. And what these did was help sailors figure out where they were by measuring angular, um, angular distances with respect to stars in the sky or the sun or certain objects um, on the horizon. So by using this, sailors were actually able to figure out where they were and what way they needed to go when you're in the middle of the ocean and you can't see anything. Nowadays, we have a similar thing, except we call it um, right ascension and declination. It's similar to longitude and latitude, um, where you can find exact locations, except we project it up onto the sky. So what this looks like is something like this where right ascension is the equivalent of north, south, east, or west, or no northwest, or northeast. So it tells you the cardinal direction that you need to face. And declination tells you how far off the horizon you need to look. By putting those things together, we have an exact angular position of things on the sky. So that's how we use angular angles to find things in the sky. How we actually use angles to measure things in the sky is where our hands come in. So I have a little picture up in the corner for you. Um, and if you have small hands, I suggest using your thumb for the first one. Um, but a pinky or a pointer finger or a thumb is going to measure one degree. So if you hold your finger up to the sky or anything in the distance and you measure it where you are and it takes up your entire finger, that's one angular degree of size. If you use your three middle fingers, that's going to be five angular degrees on the sky. If you use a fist with your thumb out to the side, that's going to be 10 angular degrees on the sky. If you make the rock symbol or the llama ears, whichever you prefer, um, and you don't splay them out, but you keep them tucked in, that's going to be 15 degrees from finger to finger. And if you spread out and do a surfer pose 
with your hand, that's going to be 25 degrees on the sky. And so this is one way that we can figure out where things are without having to have all this new technology. Um, you can go ahead and test this out with the moon. Uh, if you cover, if you put your finger up to the sky, the moon is about half a degree in angular size from the Earth on average. And so if it covers half of your finger, if you can use half of your finger to cover up the moon on the sky, then you have verified that this method actually works. So next time you see the moon, give it a try. Um, stay tuned, we'll be back with more videos for you shortly.